and welcome to the second episode of Platform Productions Cold Cuts, the show where none of the actors have read the script at all until we send it to them today. Today, we are going to be doing part two of Carolyn Lesney's The Broadcast. And last time on The Broadcast, the inspector arrived at Sterling Manor to interview five suspects. A murder has taken place. Westwood, the late gentleman of the manor, was thought to have committed suicide before the angle of his fall made it clear that he was more than likely pushed. The heiress, his daughter, received a threatening telegram confirming that foul play is actually at work here. Meanwhile, in the real world, the cast of the radio show has some trouble getting along. Uh, Irene struggles with her character. John offers to help Felicity with her writing. Artie ditched his sister Felicity for a date. And a mysterious phone call quoting the radio play script left Felicity shaken. So I would like to introduce you to all of our actors who will be performing for you tonight. Uh, I would like to ask the actors to introduce themselves, tell us the character that you are playing, and then give a little prediction, you know, one or two sentences about what you think is going to happen tonight. We will start with James Johnston. Hey everyone, uh, I'm James Johnston. I'm playing Sebastian and the suitor. My prediction tonight is that there will be a flashback. Uh, based off the thing they told me to do for later. Oh, we'll get in on that. What, what do you think is going to be on the flashback? I don't know. It's cold cuts. <laughs> I like that answer. Next up, we have Kevin Hauger. Hello, hello. Um, I'm playing John and the Doctor. Um, I think in this episode, Felicity will have gone missing. At the end of the last episode, there was a mysterious call, and I Think there's going to be a missing person either at the start or in the middle of the episode. Ooh, as in you think Felicity is going to be this missing person? That's yeah, that's my wild guess. That's what I'm throwing out into the ether. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll see how that goes. Next up, we have Emery Chase. Hi, I'm Emery. I play Irene and the house guest. Um, and I think in this episode, we're going to see maybe the the real world murder that we kind of think is coming up we already know who our victim for the radio play is um but I, we still got to get that second one figured out so i think that's what's going to happen do you know who the dead body might be well um like we were joking about last time it's whoever's paycheck was was less than the rest of ours because <laughs> you're dying after this episode <laughs> Um, I mean, I kind of suspect it might be like Felicity and Artie's mom because that phone call was no, her mom's already dead. That we know, but of. it could, but but just like in the radio play where we thought the guy died from suicide and now he's actually been murdered, it could be the exact same thing in the real world. That'd be kind of interesting. Ooh, well, we are definitely seeing some parallels between the fictional story and the audio drama, so we'll see how that goes. Next up, we have Maggie Behan. Hello, I am Maggie Behan. I'm playing Missy and the Inspector. Um, I think kind of along the lines of what Emery said, I think we're going to learn more about that real world murder this episode. I don't know if we're going to learn who it is who is dead, but we're definitely going to hear more about that, I think. And also, I think Felicity did it. Ooh, why do you think Felicity did it? I'm just trying to stir the pot. I don't know. I have no basis for that. <laughs> oh, you know, we right now, we don't know. <laughs> You could be just as, it's just as valid as everyone else's opinions is how I see it. I love accusing people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, up next we have Eric Anderson. Hello, my name is Eric Anderson. I play Artie and the Gardener. My prediction is that people are still going to hate on Artie for no reason. And that uh, John is going to be a little, little sketchier uh, in this episode. So I'm leaving that vague purposefully. But yes, prediction. Well, I won't, I won't interrogate you because it sounds like you want to leave things vague, but I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry that everyone unloaded on you so much. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully there are better things in store for Artie later, but who knows? <laughs> of course. And last but not least, Paige Elena. Hello, I'm Paige Elena. I'm playing Felicity and the heiress, and I had better not go missing, but I get paid the same no matter how many lines I have. So it doesn't <laughs> matter to me. Um, I think so. This is this is a, not a very exciting one, but I think someone else is going to get a spooky phone call and we're slowly going to whittle away the people 
the people who didn't do it. Although according to Maggie, Felicity sent a spooky phone call to herself alone in her own home, which is very fun concept. I stand by it. I, I will not take it back. <laughs> I love that. Maybe Felicity is just like the absolute drama queen that I want her to be. <laughs> so that's my prediction. I think someone else is going to get a spooky phone call and we will remove another suspect. Oh, maybe we've got multiple people that are making multiple. Phone calls. We all team. did it together because teamwork makes a dream work. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, and speaking of teamwork platform will you please send all of these wonderful actors their copies of the script actors remember to change your names to your characters to help the the viewers at home follow us better i would also like to open up the floor to any of our twitch viewers right now who are live who want to offer up their own predictions or have their own questions about this story about what we're doing who they think did it remember there are two murders and two murderers so audience, what do you think? We've heard from the actors. Do you, any of you want to say something nice about Artie? Nobody. Artie doesn't need their, you know, their Don't sympathy. give it to him. <laughs> he hasn't actors earned it. Remember He'll convince him with, their, with his actions. You know, that's how he does things. <laughs> actors, Hold remember to, to give me a thumbs, remember to give me a thumbs up when you have received your script so I know to proceed. All right, that is everybody. So let's get started on the broadcast. Episode two, Interrogation by Caroline Lesney. Early morning in Artie's kitchen. Artie, post walk of shame, waits for the coffee to brew with his head on the kitchen counter. Felicity paces nearby. You can't track the call? I told you it was a blocked number. It, it was really weird, like something out of a movie. Hmm. That's all you've got? Hmm? I'm hungover. Fuck, we're gonna be late. I need a shower. Will you just talk to me about this before you go off? And... It's just some idiot with a voice changing app, Fell. You're acting like you're in danger or something. Well, maybe I am. If it's freaking you out that much, why not just do what they said? What, quit? Maybe you should. I need the money. And I can't quit on them now. We're too far in. Who gives a shit? They're co-workers, not friends. And what would that say about me? If I'm serious about working in this industry... Are you? Because you really don't act like it. The coffee maker beeps. Artie takes a mug from the cupboard and pours himself a cup. Black. Felicity backs off. What do you think I should do? I think you should figure out who called you, who's trying to get rid of you, and why. And then I think you should start taking care of your own problems. Artie takes a sip of the coffee and immediately spits it into the sink. <sighs> Ugh, piece of shit coffee maker. Can I have one thing that works? Later that morning in a coffee shop, Felicity and Missy stand in line. Missy is looking at her phone. There's a chattering of customers and the constant buzz of the espresso machine, loud blasts from the milk steamer as baristas work and call names from the counter. This place is interesting. I mean, how do you even make oat milk? You really are from out of town. You consider going vegan yet? Not yet. You will. So, uh, did you, um, do anything fun last night? Last night? Uh, I had a drink at the Ivy and did a skin peel. The Ivy, wow. It was a meeting, some director. Oh, so no like phone calls or anything? Uh, maybe to my boyfriend? Why? Oh, no, no reason. Hey, have you noticed how we're always the ones getting the coffee, you, me, and Irene? What do you mean? Nothing, I just noticed. So you really didn't make any strange calls or get any strange What's calls? going on with you? You're acting really weird, like shifty. My Meisner coach can send you some deep breathing exercises if you want. No, I'm fine, I'm fine. I just, I got this weird phone call last night. 
telling me to drop the project. This project? Yeah. And I was just thinking, well, wondering, I guess, if maybe it was you on the phone? Missy? Are you fucking serious? Uh, I, sorry, I don't know. I was just thinking, you know, with the part You really think I, got... I need to resort to shit like that? Like, getting you out of the way to play the ingenue is gonna, in some dinky audio drama, is really gonna change my life. Missy? Missy? No, I, I didn't mean it like that. Do yourself a favor. Keep any other theories you have to yourself. No one wants to work with someone who's trying to catch them out. She grabs the coffee and pushes past Felicity to the door. And just so we're clear, I've got the better part. She goes out of the shop with a tinkle of the bell. Sterling Manor's breakfast room. In an airy sunlit space just off the kitchen, the quiet clinking of silverware and china accompanies the heiress as she picks at her meal. Suddenly, the French doors swing open and the inspector comes through. She stops short. Forgive me, I don't want to disturb you while you're taking breakfast. I have no stomach for it anyway. Can I get you anything, coffee? No, thank you. How can I help you, Inspector? I'd like to ask you about your father. What kind of person he was, what you remember of him. Yes, of course. He was brilliant, my father. A, a truly kind man. Less difficult to find, I think, in the successful kindness. He... I'm sorry, it, it's still quite, quite difficult, you know. Of course. He was troubled, too. Never really right again after my mother died. He wasn't dull, don't think that, never dull, just profoundly sad. Which is why it made sense when he, when he... The heiress can't continue. The inspector clears her throat and pours the heiress another cup of tea. Thank you. You said he'd been unhappy since your mother died. Was that quite recently? No, no, I was very small. Did anything change recently then? Something to exacerbate his mental state? Well, he'd been having nightmares. Well, I say nightmares. They were more like vis hallucinations, visions really of Robert. Robert? My brother. He died during the war, 103rd Regiment. We were all very proud. And these visions, they were quite vivid. He'd wake the whole house shouting. Send the Kaiser straight to me. I'll show him how we treat these tyrants here in America. Daddy, please be quiet. Daddy, everyone's asleep. He's just a child. You're dreaming. It's all right. My son. My son. But they could be silent too. I'd wake to find him tangled in the curtains or Robert's uniform. But they were getting better before... His doctor swore the new dosage was helping. His doctor? The same doctor staying in the spare bedroom? Of course. Well, he's been living here for, gosh, two years now? He used to drive out to give father his heart medication every night. After a while, it just made more sense. And he was administering what drugs to your father? Barbiturates. Intravenous 500 milligrams every evening. Out in the garage, a wrench is cranking away, metal clanking loud as the doctor calls out to the inspector from underneath the car. Intra... Stuck straight in the vein, injected by syringe. The doctor rolls out from under the car, the squeaky wheels and the mechanic's dolly protesting loudly. <laughs> don't look so green, inspector. Surely you've seen worse than that. I just have this thing about needles. What does that amount indicate? Just a standard dosage, to ease the strain in the heart. Poor old boy, he always had trouble catching his breath. Ms. Westwood reports her father having hallucinations prior to his death. Wouldn't that be a well-known side effect of barbiturate use? Well, sure. I mean, there's always guesswork involved with prescriptions. What's a worthwhile risk? What adverse effects you can handle? We'd reduced the dosage recently to see if it helped. So it couldn't have been the medication causing the nightmares? Now, I didn't say that. But for Westwood, I think it's more likely he was truly haunted. We all loved Robert. He was my godson. And Old Westwood never really forgave himself for being too sick to take his son's place. The doctor pops the hood of the car and starts fiddling around inside. I didn't know they taught mechanics at medical, medical school. They teach it in the army. Second Voluntary Infantry, 1896. It's where I met Westwood. Pretty nice car on a family physician's salary. Oh, it's not mine. I'm, I'm just putting myself to good use. 
I always liked a little manual work. Takes my mind off things. What's wrong with it? Everything. It's the boy's car. Kid doesn't even know how to take care of it. <laughs> You should it into the to... outside gate. Uh, something went wrong with the the the, the carburetor, I, I, I think, or or uh, was it the radiator? Too bad. It's a fine car. I've been thinking of a speedster for myself. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I prefer books. In the library, the fireplace is crackling loudly despite the summer heat. The suitor drums his fingers on a book cover nervously. He coughs. The inspector circles the room. Have you known the Westwood family long? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, uh, sure. Or, well, my father has neighbors. He's always been good with neighbors. You live nearby? Just, uh, just uh, down the road, the, 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 the uh, you know, uh, Morton House. And that's where you were this weekend? No, I, uh, I had the guest room. The Westwoods have been very kind to allow me to stay with them while I, uh, while Miss Westwood and I were becoming better acquainted. And you don't have any quarrel with the family? Any reason to resent Westwood or his daughter? I, no, no, no. I, I, I very much admire Miss Westwood. I, I mean, I had hoped, still hope, of course, that is uh, my father thinks it is a pertinent match. But you disagree? Not at all. I, I, I have admired her for year, for many years. You know her well, then? Only... Peripherally, uh, visually, uh, socially, you might say. I, I am a close friend, a, acquaintance, I suppose, of, of, of uh, well, you, you know, the, the young woman in the guest house. She did me the, 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 the honor of making my introduction to the Westwoods, as she believes me to be. A sniveling, social ladder obsessed, good for nothing money grabber. Only got him off my case by telling him he's too good for me but that didn't quite work out the way I wanted it. By the pool, the house guest is sunning herself in a bathing suit and a large hat. The water laps gently around the edge of the pool as the inspector perches uncomfortably on a lounge chair. So now he's pursuing Ms. Westwood. At the moment, yes, <laughs> poor thing. And how do you know the Westwoods? I've known them for quite some time, friend of the family. Quite a close friend, I'd think, to be staying here indefinitely. I don't get to see the lady of the house very often, you know. I'm usually traveling, making acquaintances, attending engagements. When I'm here, she invites me to stay. And it's been... Five months. Five months? Wow. Which room is yours? Oh, I don't stay in the manor. I stay in the pool house. Gives me a little more independence. And that's where you were Saturday? Yes, I, well, let's see. I woke up early, took my morning tea in the garden with poor old dear Westwood as usual, and went for a walk around the estate. Then after lunch, I went for a swim, sunned myself on the lawn, and yes, spent the rest of my evening in the pool house, alone. You and Westwood were close. He liked me, I think. I was the only one who ever helped him with the crossword. How charming. I'd like to ask you a couple more questions. Do you have a minute? I ain't got time for you now, and I won't have time for you later. If you want to talk, talk. The hedge garden is being pruned painstakingly by the gardener. His shears snip violently away at the low hedges and rose bushes. A stone cupid fountain gurgles happily nearby. How long have you worked at Sterling Manor? Worked? About a decade. Lived my whole life. How's that? My father was the gardener here before he bid it. This job just about worked a damn fool to death. You must be grateful to the Westwoods then for keeping you on in his place? Grateful? My old man practically killed himself in this job and they barely knew his name. Grateful. Nah, I've got no love for the Westwoods and I don't care who knows it. Then why do you stay? Thought I'd get out during the war. We all did. Win some glory, change your station. That's all a lie. You come back broke and alone and fucked in the head, just like you were before. At least I didn't end up sleeping on the street a six feet under, like most of the guys I fought with. At least I had a place to go. Okay. Just one more question. Where were you at the time of the murder? 
Oh, well, I was washing my hair. Uh, reading by the fireplace. Up at the medical convention in Albany. Spraying for slugs, nocturnal sons of bitches. I was asleep in my bed. It's not much of an alibi, I know. And none of you heard anything? No. no. Back in the recording studio. The door swings shut, unnoticed, as Felicity and Missy come into the coffees. Artie and Irene are mid-screaming match. She's not taking it seriously! How could you possibly know what I'm thinking? Because I'm the one running the scene with you! Felicity pulls John aside as Missy goes to put the coffees on the side table. What's happening? Well, ten minutes ago, they were demanding to see each other's pay slips. Now I think they're arguing over who has more trauma? Venti Cappuccino. Thanks, I'll get you back. Don't worry about it. She's a spoiled Hollywood Hills princess! That's like such a microaggression. I don't know, I'd call that full macroaggression. A microaggression? Against someone who doesn't need to work for a paycheck? I don't know how you stand for this, Sebastian. I thought you were the one in charge. I am in charge. I'm just bad. I'm just trying to get our scene to work better. Maybe it would work better if you didn't make it all about you. The scene is about me. Wow, it's the misogyny for me. Jesus fucking Christ. You're actually an asshole. You're so insufferable. Oh! Oh! You're so gorgeous. Jesus Christ. You smell so good. You're getting fertilizer on my dress. I don't care. <laughs> in the backseat of the suitor's car, the gardener and the house guest are making out passionately. The gears are squeaking. The couple is panting. Suddenly, the house guest pulls back. Wait, wait. We need to talk about it. But I find this much more interesting. <laughs> he kisses her, pulling at her pearls. She giggles. <laughs> Would you stop it? This is serious. It can wait ten minutes. Mm, that is true. <laughs> he kisses her again. What happened to your hand? Uh, cut it on the shears earlier. Stupid. You were making it feel much better, though. <laughs> wait, wait. I need to know. What do we say? The gardener sighs and moves off from top of her. What do we say when? When she asks us more questions. You know, where I was the night of the... murder? And I don't think you want it getting out. Where did you say you were? I told her I was washing my hair. Good. Then that's the story you stick to. I didn't see you. You didn't see me. And what if she finds out we were together? She won't. But what if? Then we come clean. Come on, honey. It's not that hard. Come clean about? About us. If they think they figured out our secret, they won't go digging for another. All right? All right. Good. Now, can we get back to the fun part? He kisses down her jaw to her neck. Hey. Mm. Where did you go that night? After I left. Nowhere. He kisses her. She pushes him off. No, really. Don't worry about it, doll face. It's all taken care of. He kisses her again, and they sink together into the leather car seat. In the recording studio kitchen, Felicity and John are leaning against the marble countertop. It's lunchtime. The microwave whirs quietly behind them. They quoted my script? I know. That's why I assumed it must be someone from this group, but... John, do people really not want me here? Of course they do. It, it could just be a coincidence. Tolstoy is popular. Maybe. I don't know. Do you think I should be worried? Don't read too much into it. It's probably just someone's stupid idea of a practical joke. <laughs> what? Uh, nothing. It's just... That's exactly what you have the house guest say. Felicity, don't worry, okay? We'll figure out who did it, and I'll be here if things go wrong. Not that uh, you need protection or anything. I, I just, you know, uh, I want to... I, I know, I know. John puts a consoling hand on her arm. Felicity has just started to inch toward him when Artie bangs through the door. Oh, what's going on in here? Hey, get your hands off my sister. Uh, lunch. We're making lunch. He's just being nice. Nice can land you in Planned Parenthood. Artie! 
Sebastian's wondering where you two are. Wrap up whatever this is and get back out there. Yep, we're on our way. Look, I don't like you, my guy. There's nothing wrong against you. You can just rub me the wrong way. So you can stay away from my sister, or you can have me to deal with. Artie bangs out of the kitchen. There's an awkward silence, then the microwave beeps loudly. They jump. John scrambles to take the TV dinners out. I've, I've got these. You can go. Oh, no, no, no. I'll help. Really? It's fine. He's not actually that much to deal with, you know? I think you could probably handle him. Would you want me to? Maybe I would. He blinks, blinks again, then hands her a few of the trays. I uh, read the pages you sent me. We could talk about them? Only if you promise not to pull your punches. I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> Come on, these will get cold. At the foot of Sterling Manor, the inspector and the doctor stand on the well-groomed grass, looking up at the towers above. The wind blows loudly. So, this is where he fell, is it? I declared him dead myself. His poor daughter, she called me the next morning in hysterics, and I came from Albany immediately. The police were right behind. Huh. What is it? Just interesting. He must have climbed relatively far out before he fell, even if he was pushed. But maybe I'm misjudging it from here. And no one thought windows that wide might be a hazard? Well, I dare say we didn't think there'd be a homicidal maniac running around. But with Westwood's nightmares, he could have fallen at any time. He wasn't a sleepwalker, Inspector, just an insomniac. That's not what Miss Westwood told me. Isn't it? The inspector paces up the length of the patio, then back. Join me in the woods. I'd like to hear more about your military days. Why the woods? We're looking for clues, Dr. Watson. Who? No one. Come along. Soon they are deep in the woods. The footsteps of the doctor and the inspector crunch over the first fallen leaves of the season on the forest floor. The wind has died down. It's quiet. Those were the days back in 97. Blue Newport and the girls, oh, the dark hair, the way they'd admire our uniforms, and the constant thrill of danger, the sweat on your back during a long drill. We were really alive back then. Nowadays, I feel rather like that broken down car in the garage. Nonsense. Of course, then they shipped me off to solve the wounded, and Westwood got all the fun to himself. The war in 98, with the Spaniards. That must have been grueling. Sure, for me it was. But Westwood caught a bullet in the shoulder early on and was home by the summer. Lucky we'd lived close by all these years and never known it. When I was discharged, I moved back home and the rest you know. You must have been very close. I was the best man at his wedding. The inspector turns on the spot, rustling some leaves. Do you see anything, doctor? Uh, like I said, Westwood died up at the house. I don't know why the woods would have anything to do with it. <laughs> you never know what you might find. The greenhouse is just a bit further up this way. I don't suppose. Inspector! The suitor comes barreling down the path, skidding in, in the leaves as he races toward the inspector. Inspector, come quickly, please. It's, it's God, it's terrible. What I... is it? Tell me, quickly. On the front lawn, I couldn't, no, there was nothing, nothing I could do. Come on, man, pull yourself together. What's happened? It's the gardener. He's dead. The same dramatic music, and we pull out of the story into the studio after dark. A smattering of applause and a rustle of papers as the actors wrap up the recording for the night. Great episode, John. Yeah, really nice work, everybody. That's a wrap for tonight. Let's plan on 10 a.m. tomorrow for notes and 11 for go time. Got Sounds it. good. Um, does anybody... Yeah, and if anyone's got uh, any issues with the script, please talk to John, not me. I'm off for the evening. Uh, well, hold on. Thanks, Sebastian. You okay, Felicity? Seb, how would you feel about catering tomorrow morning? I've got a friend down in Venice. Wait! What is it? Artie. Where's Artie? End of episode two. Da, da, da. What? What? Yes, thank you, everybody. You may change your names back to your names. And I would also like to discuss obviously this episode with you but again our viewers what are you thinking do you have any predictions ideas we would love to hear from you and i will respond and discuss them as i am talking with the actors as well so what was the 
biggest bombshell for you. There were so many in this episode. There, Leslie is really pushing this story forward. So I want to hear from you. What, what, what was your big <gasps> moment? I just can't believe Artie murdered himself. <laughs> so well, this is vindication. The, for the, the, the perfect I crime. <laughs> They'll never suspect it. <laughs> well, and they also brought up the possibility that Westwood may have been his own murderer as well. So there's some parallels there. Maybe Ooh. it's just like a, a long, no, that's really dark. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Jonestown, Kevin. We can't go there. <laughs> Emery and Eric, you did such a good job transitioning into that saucy little scene. And I was, I was really impressed by that. that as I was gasp. reading along, I was like, ooh, how are they going to do that? <laughs> That I was knew. the biggest bombshell. Like, that was, was on my... That was the biggest. I had not read that ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was on my character sheet that I was having an affair with the gardener. So I knew about that, but I had not read ahead. And I was like, oh, oh, again. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> hey, so oh, no! Good. Oh, you? no. <laughs> yeah, me too. That was like just completely out of nowhere. Just like, all right, here we go. <laughs> It's good because I feel like the gardener really got some, you know, meat on his bones uh, during that scene. So, you know, now he's dead. I gotta, you know. So we we <laughs> have. I'm not looking too good to go as a around. murder suspect here. <laughs> so, speaking of murder suspects, we have two comments from viewers to address. Nice. James says that he thinks it's Artie. And he's playing a huge con game. So yet yes. another mark I like against that. Another Artie. Artie, wow. That's a, mark, that's a mark for Artie. That's brilliant. If he's like managing this, I want to see it happen. Don't ease up. It's all Artie. And Veronica <laughs> thinks that John killed Artie for interrupting his lunchtime romance. It's not only a lunchtime romance, it's with his sister. You did yeah. say you could handle him. Or, or <laughs> Missy yeah. said, I was like, you Felicity want me to? said I'll you could it. handle him. I love that. I love so that. <laughs> John that is like a fast. flirtatious line. I love that as a flirtation line. Like, yeah, you could fight my brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could deck him. I wouldn't care. In fact, or, I'd or like it. Him. Like, or kill him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Missy said to handle him. And John said, they dead ass. Okay, okay. And then <laughs> murder him. Bet. I mean, notably, he's just disappeared. He's not dead yet. Like, we, we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yet. Kevin's like, stop, uh, stop. Big Artie's just puking out, out in the for Artie, uh, bushes. Yeah. <laughs> Eric, how many episodes were you paid for? <laughs> <laughs> I think the same as everyone else, you know? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Might have a real easy next couple of weeks. <laughs> Eric's like, it was two episodes, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? We're all here for two, right? <laughs> next week starts and Artie's like still just fucking around with the coffee machine. He's just been there yeah. for like a week. <laughs> that's his whole arc. <laughs> Look, oh, caffeine amazing. is very important. It is the breakfast, lunch, and dinner of champions. <laughs> oh. I'm praying Artie gets that cup of coffee by the last episode. Yeah. Just kidding. I don't want him to have that. Look, this is this is a Lynchian terror, so he, there will be coffee at some point. So does anyone have any final thoughts before we wrap this up? Uh, I just want to give props to that comment that you just made, Meredith, because that was brilliant, but anyone else? <laughs> oh, thank you. I think Artie and John are definitely going to fight at some point. Artie's yeah. going to put the smack down on him, though, because, you oh, know, mm. he's the he's the big dog. You know, he can't can't beat Artie. I mean, Artie's got so much rage. I, I yeah. do think my he mother's on Artie. Here. It's true. So much rage for that coffee machine. <laughs> rage for the coffee machine and never, ever, ever underestimate the, the anger and rage of a man who's lost his mama. Aww. I didn't even think about it. Damn. Yeah. Aww. Don't make me don't make me feel uh, sympathy for our familial wait, wait, protection. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Take that no. back. I'm not interested. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. The artist, beautiful job tonight, as always. So proud of you. Uh thank you for everything. Thank you to all of our viewers and all of our staff. Uh Cold Cuts is based on a, an original idea by writing producer Dicklin Grogan. Uh, music by Vincenzo Torsiello. The broadcast is written by Carolyn Lindsay. We do this every Saturday and every Tuesday, the videos will be posted on YouTube and the audio will be available on all streaming platforms. So we will see you all subsequent Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, make sure to follow us online at Platform Prodco, P-L-A-T-F-O-R-M-P-R-O-D-C-O. For more, and we will see you next week, and maybe something nice will <laughs> finally happen to poor Artie because doesn't I'm matter. rooting. Doesn't I'm matter. rooting for you because I'm a contrarian. <laughs>
<laughs> have a good night, everybody. Thank you so much for being a part of this, of this really awesome storyline. I am so excited to see where everything goes next week. Bye. <laughs>